Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kalen. Today I want to talk to you about finding shortest paths in unweighted graphs. So shortest path problems come in three different forms. First of all, we have single source problems. So in this case, I want to find the shortest paths from a given node to all the other nodes in my graph. Then we have the point to point problem, which is probably the one that we most often think of. I want to find the shortest path from point A to point B, or vertex A to vertex B. This, however, is typically not done as a thing. It is more often done as stopping the single source problem early when we've located the desired destination. Because the reality is that we can't guarantee finding the shortest path unless we allow ourselves to be branching out and looking in multiple directions. Finally, we have all shortest paths problems. In this case, I want to find the shortest path connecting each pair of points in the graph. Today, I'm gonna to focus on that single source problem because the single source answer will get us to the point to point. And while we have ways to do the all shortest paths as a thing in itself, we can always do all shortest paths by simply running the single source problem from each individual node in the graph. When we're thinking about these problems, we also want to distinguish between weighted and unweighted path costs. So we have an unweighted graph, then the path cost is the number of edges in the path. We also are very interested in weighted path costs is the sum of the costs of the edges in the path. Today we're going to focus on unweighted graphs. My next two videos actually will be focused on dealing with weighted path costs. Our solution for finding shortest paths in an unweighted graph is something we call breadth first search. So the basic idea behind breadth first search is that I'm starting at a point, in this case, the source for my single source shortest path problem. And I'm next going to look at all the nodes that are directly connected to this one. So all the things that are one edge away. Then I'm gonna go out and look at all of the nodes that are two edges away. So one more edge from one of those nodes then I can go on to the nodes that are three edges away. And finally, to the single node in this graph that is four edges away, one more out from one of the three. This can give us shortest paths in terms of the number of edges. Let's take a look at what we're going to need to actually do this. Obviously, we need a representation of the graph itself to know what vertices do we have, what edges are connecting them. Then we're going to need an array to keep track of the path cost, because we're going to be interested in that. We're going to need an array also to keep track of the previous vertex. So when we locate a particular vertex, we need to know which vertex we came from, which vertex is on the other end of the edge we used to get here. This is necessary to construct the actual path. And then we need an array to keep track of whether we've actually found a path to that vertex. Then finally, we need a queue. The central data structure for breadth first search is in fact a queue. This is how we're going to go through and look at all the things that were just one edge away, and then all the things that are just two edges away, and then all the things that are just one more edge from those twos, the three edges away, and so on. The queue is perfect for helping us do that. We need to think about what information we need to keep in the queue. We're going to need what vertex we just reached, what vertex we came from, and the total cost of the path to this vertex. So the, in this case, the number of edges back to the starting vertex. Those are going to allow us to provide the information we need in the end. 
So this then is our basic process for shortest path finding using breadth first search. We're going to start by adding all vertices that are directly connected to the source to our queue. Then as long as the queue is not empty and we still have vertices we don't have paths to, we're going to take the first item off the queue. We don't yet have a path to that vertex. We're going to update our various arrays with appropriate information, indicating, yes, we have a path to here now. This is the vertex we came from. This is the total cost of that path. Then for each edge out of the new vertex that we just recorded the path to, if there's no path to that vertex yet, the one on the other end of that edge, we're going to add the vertex information to the queue. So let's walk through an example of this. We're going to take just a part of the graph that I just looked at. We have the graph. We're going to set up our path and cost and Boolean arrays. I'm just using check marks to represent the Booleans there. And we have a queue that we can hold the from vertex, the to vertex, so that's the one we just reached, and the cost of the total path. So now we need to add the edges out of our source. So we'll first do the edge from A to C. So that came from A, going to C, total cost of one, because this is the only edge we've used. Same thing for A to G and for A to B. We can check our loop conditions, certainly don't have all of our paths yet, and our queue is not empty. If our queue is ever empty and we don't have all our paths yet, that would indicate that we have some vertices that we can't reach from our source. So now we're going to handle the first item in the queue. We have an edge from A to C. So we're going to go to the C. We're going to say, okay, we have a path. Our previous vertex was A. Our total cost was one. All set. Now we need to go through the edges out of C and add that information to our queue. We're going to go to CF. We add that we came from C, we went to F, and then the two comes from the fact that this cost is one. So we're simply adding the new edge to the total cost to get here. Then we handle the edge from C to G, very similar. We handle the edge from C to A. We don't do anything about that one because we already have a path to A. Now in some cases, for some problems, we may actually be interested in whether there is a path back to our source. In this case, we're assuming that's not the case. We check our loop conditions. And of course, we have things in the queue. We don't have all our paths yet, so we keep going. Handle the next item from the queue, so the first one we have. And that gives us a path to G from A for one. So we start handling the edges out of G. So there will be no action on the one to C because we already have that path. No action on the one to A, of course. On the one to D, we need to go ahead and add that information to the queue. Cost of two, because it cost us one to get to G. And we also need to add the information for J. That finishes off our information about G. We're ready to check our loop again. Still not done, of course. So now we handle the next item from the queue, which would give us A to B. So now we start handling our edges out of B. So we have B to A, where we have nothing to do because we already have A, of course. We do have B to D, which we do need to add to the queue. Again, that'll be a total cost of two. Notice that we are ending up with some duplicate values. We have this way to get to G, which we already have at this point, did not at the point we put it in. Two different ways to get to D, but that's okay. We put them in because we don't have an easy way to know what's in the queue. So now we're going to check our loop conditions, have things in the queue, don't have all our 
paths yet. So now we handle C to F. So we add F, update the information in the arrays. F to C, we don't do anything. F to J, we add that information. And that's all of our edges out of F. Check our conditions, still not done. We pull C to G. Now in this case, we already have G. So we simply don't do anything. We throw that one away. Check our loop conditions. Candle the first item in the queue. It gets us to D, which is new for us. So we update our arrays and start checking the edges out of D. Don't do anything about B or G, but we do add H. Adding it for three because the total cost for us to get to D was two. So we add one to that to get the three. Check our loop conditions. J is new for us, so we update our arrays. Look at the edge from J to F. We've already got F, so we do nothing. We already have G, so we do nothing. We don't have H yet, so we do add that to our Q. Check our loop conditions. B, D, we already have D, so we don't do anything. Just toss that. We check our loop conditions, still going. So we pull the next one off. Again, we already have J. We know that what we already have is at least as good as what's on the queue. So we throw that away, check our loop conditions, and we move on to H. That then will give us our last path. So at this point, we actually probably want to set things up so we immediately stop without checking all of the edges out of H because we know that we already have a path to everything and we know that the paths we already have are better than any future paths we might find because our breadth first search process is guaranteeing that for us. We're going to find all the things that are one away first then all the things that are two away, then all the things that are three away, and so on. So now one of the questions is how do we get to the actual path? So we have the information we need in this path array, but we don't have a path that's sort of human friendly or even many algorithms friendly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our path array and work backwards from the destination to reach the source. That's gonna give us a sequence of vertices that is the backward version of the path. And then we'll simply reverse that to get the forward version. So suppose that we want to find the path from A to H. So we're gonna start at the H. Then we're going to add the D because D is what was at that spot in the array. And we're gonna go then to the index for D. That gives us G and we go to the index for G. That will give us A, which was our source. So now we have the path backwards. So now we're simply going to reverse that sequence. So we have A, G, D, H with a cost of three which this being unweighted, we can figure out pretty easily from the number of edges, but we can also just take a look at the cost part of our arrays and see that the cost of getting to H is three. So I hope this helps you feel like you've got a little better idea of what's going on when we apply breadth first search to find the shortest path in an unweighted graph. Next time, I'll be talking about Dijkstra's algorithm for finding shortest paths with weighted graphs.